Well, we finish out the week in the book of Ephesians as we do so we're in chapter 5, looking at the commandments given to us here. And chapters 5 and 6 in particular are just filled with commandments that God gives us. And so we're going to spend more time in chapter 5 and 6 next week looking at some of those commandments. But we'll close out, close out this week with looking at verses 6 and 7 of chapter 5. He says, Let no one deceive you with empty words. So there's our first command for the, today. Let no one deceive you with empty words. In almost every epistle, there may be an exception, but I honestly can't think of one. Almost every epistle deals with this issue of how easy it is for us to be led astray. We can be led astray with doctrinal issues, false teachers. We can be led astray by our own flesh that draws us away from God. We can be led astray by the world system that uh, also uh, draws us away from the Lord and, and into its system. We can be led astray by the deception of the devil, who is the master deceiver of all. And so it's so easy to be deceived, and it's easy to be self-deceived. And so Scripture talks about it a great deal. A lot of times today, people want to ignore those passages. They seem negative or whatever, but they're, ver they're a very vital part of the teaching of the New Testament. And the, and the Old Testament as well. But here he says in this verse 6 that we are, he says, do not be deceived with empty words. So he's speaking mainly about apparently people on the outside teaching false things. Uh, and so this is this was prominent even in the first century. It's, uh, it's probably more prominent today, and especially where there's more means of deception. With all the media we have, all the media platforms from radio to blogs to uh, social media and on and on and on, uh, the false teachers have an open arena to teach things that are not in true with Scripture. And many, many Christians, people who truly love Christ, are drawn into these false isms through one means or the other and are taken in. And that is the need, that's why we have such a need for discernment, which he speaks of here. Don't be deceived with empty words, which means we need to examine the teachings that are out there. When people bring us a teaching or we hear something on a, in a song uh, or we hear something, in a, read something in a book or a sermon or whatever, we should, we should discern those things in light of Scripture and not be deceived by the empty words of these false teachers. For because of these things, the wrath of God comes upon the sons of disobedience. So the false teachings, the, the, the errors, the heresies, this is one of the reasons that the, the anger of God comes upon unbelievers. He is not necessarily saying that, that, uh, that everybody who buys into these false teachings is an unbeliever. Uh, we expect unbelievers to be drawn into false teachings. The, the issue is believers who buy into these things. There's a, more, there's a higher expectation for the Christian. We have the Word of God. We have the body of Christ. We have the Holy Spirit. Uh, there's no necessity that we fall for these false teachings. These things are condemned by God. So why should we fall for them? And on the positive side, we should take very careful look at these things that are being taught to us. Verse 7, Therefore, do not be partakers with them. So one of the reasons why people are drugged into false teachings is because they hang around people that teach false things. They're friendships. Uh, and that doesn't mean we can't be a friend with an unbeliever or even with people that believe differently. But when their teachings begin to infiltrate us, we need to be very careful. Do not be partakers with them. Do not buy into their systems and their theologies and their teachings and maybe perhaps become one who spreads it to others. Dropping down to verse 11, and do not participate in, a, in the unfruitful works of darkness, but instead even expose them. So not only are we not to participate in these false teachings and all that goes with them, which is false living, uh, we should expose them. We should be the kind of people that, that are exposing these things in a gracious way, a kind way, but a, a clear way, that these things are not from God. And we're, we're showing in our lives and to other people what the Word of God says. Not so that we can be right and other people are wrong, but so that we can uh, show people the right path to live for the Lord. That, that is a task God gives us. It's part of the commands 
that we find here in the book of Ephesians. We'll look forward to uh, looking at five more uh, next week in the book of Ephesians before we close out this book. I hope you're enjoying it, and I hope you take the, the just a little uh, homework assignment I gave earlier of reading through the book of Ephesians uh, sometime this weekend. We'll see you next week. <music>